Hi. Hi. Guess what? Two years today. Happy anniversary, baby. Happy anniversary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like yesterday, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was looking very skinny. Mm hmm. And uh, you cried on the, <laughs> on the altar. You know, we actually had, I think, a deal on who was going to cry first. Yeah. And you or did. who was going to cry. No, you did. And I did. I eventually joined in. I dropped a few tears. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember. But I was trying to encourage her. <laughs> it doesn't look like you're the only one crying. <laughs> well, we're two years today. Happy anniversary to us. God Happy has been the rock of this home now here are 10 things we've learned on the journey so far so i have learned in two years over and over again that it's family before ministry you know i think that one of the things that a lot of Christian homes get to fall for is we get to spiritualize the concept of ministry mm. or my assignment and we mm. get to make it about the nations, others mm. and we trivialize the first primary assignment which is the home. You know, it's just like when people say, uh, Lord take me to the nations and, they, and yet you've not converted your neighbor. You know, that kind of thing. So I've learned that it's family before ministry, right? You know, investing in building family, investing in, you know, raising the family, raising the home uh, with godly templates. It's family before ministry. So, so it's, a, it's an imbalance to say, I'm all about the ministry, going to the nations. I don't have to have family. Family itself is ministry. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. your first ministry. Yeah. Because um, God entrusted you to raise that home that's yeah. your first assignment if you, I dare say that if you're raising the nation's ministry as we termed it and not paying attention to family which is your first assignment how is the best way to put this that's not good that's not good so it's family before ministry and that's one of the things I've learned so far. all right so in two years, I've learned that um, negative words don't yield positive outcome. Mm, true. So I've, I've never heard someone say, um, he told me I'm stupid. And after he said so, I felt so good about myself. You know, so many times people um, have conversations and um, the aim of the conversation is to make peace. But you use very negative words mm -hmm. and instead of the peace you realize the person gets offended and the situation mm -hmm. gets worse than high wars yes. before the conversation starts. Number three, I've learned that my husband is as much as my head as he is my friend. You see, because I married my best friend, there's that um, unintentionality, you know, to casualize him as your head so uh, oh he's my friend now he would take it now he's my friend now he would you know and then you tone down on some things just because you know he would understand or you just casualize the things that you shouldn't be casualizing you know one of the things I've learned is as much as he is my friend he's my head as Christ is scriptural as Christ is the head of the church my husband is my head as much as he is my friend. Awesome. Awesome. So if, if you focus so much on the friendship part, you can't see leadership. Mm -hmm. If you focus so much on leadership part, you can't see friendship. Mm -hmm. so there has to be that balance. balance Very important. It. Yes. Awesome. Yes. All right. So I, I've, I've learned that um, I shouldn't take casually discernments that come from you. All right, so <clears throat> I remember when we first got married, you sent some things that you're know, like this thing, or sometimes a dream, mm -hmm. and it, it it hasn't crossed my mind yet. So at the very beginning, I used to just 
I probably go God would tell me, you know, on my own time and all yes. that. And which is sometimes, which is which is beautiful, mm -hmm. but sometimes I find out, <clears throat> eventually those things play out, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, okay, maybe I should. So I've learned um, instruction. Yeah, principally, would expect that the man should hear God, uh, but um, um, direction can come from both parties. Come on. Yes, right? sir. And when it does, the fact that it's not coming from the man does not make it less important, doesn't make it less spiritual. Mm -hmm. right? So the idea of the home shouldn't be who is bringing the suggestion, mm -hmm. it's what works. If it works, if it's time timely, whoever is bringing it is it's inconsequential. Mm -hmm. And I think I must give that to you because... Uh, uh, outside marriage now, let's take it out of, out of the discourse of marriage. I've seen you, you know, teach me through leadership. You know, it, it doesn't have to come from the leader. Yeah. It is humility for the leader to know that he is not all knowing. Yeah. You know, and he can lean on people around, yeah. people who God is helping him raise. Yeah. You know, to to glean knowledge, to glean direction, to glean. It takes a lot of humility yeah, to do it does. that. So it does. Thank you for the answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. What have I learned? Ah. Uh, okay. Yes, I've certainly learned that the change I want to see in my husband must first come from me. Now, you see, this part I think gave me so much rattles. You know, you want your, for instance, you want your wife to bathe four times a day. Mm. <laughs> Beating part <laughs> you know, I've learned that, you know, if you're the husband, you need to start bathing at least four times a day. Somehow it just rubs up. Some mm -hmm. somehow they just get the point. Yeah, yeah. They just, you know, okay, okay. And first it starts from you doing it alone. Yeah. Later they do it with you. Yeah. You know, and then unintentionally they realize, oh, this thing we've been complaining about, you've already started fixing it. You yeah. know, so become the change you want to see in your partner. And I think that this is not just fitting for ro romantic relationships or even marriage. Life in general. Even life in general. All your relationships become the change you want to see in that person. This is not motivation. I promise you, if you put into practice everything we're sharing with you, you would experience a total paradigm shift. You know, one of the most effective ways to teach is by example. Come on, yes. If you become the example of what you're trying to pass across, yes. it's easy for people to learn because yes. they are seeing someone. And you don't even have to talk so it. much. You do less talking. Yes, yes. Less talking. <clears throat> All right. So um, I've learned that um, diversity is a blessing. Mm. Um, there's that tendency to be married and you want your spouse to see. This is how I process things, and you expect that every single time. It should be the way exactly. you process. Mm. All right. So for me at the beginning, that was a little bit of a challenge for me mm. because I process things more from a very um, okay. This is it. Reason, reason it, reason it. Take out emotions, you know. But you feel, mm -hmm. you know, you feel as much as you process. Yes. All right. So um, I used to like. So, but we need that balance. Mm -hmm. So if, if I come with reasoning it out and you come with feeling it, right? So each of us is making up for the deficiency, deficiency, deficiency of the other of person, the other, yes. right? So um, you don't have to change your spouse to yeah. be you. Mm -hmm. And your spouse doesn't have to change you to be them. Yes. The reason why God made you diverse is because the both of you complement each other. Yes. And if we leave people, of course, not different where it's bad, different when it's just different there are people who have issues in marriage because they think differently they it's not it's not bad just yes. learn it's like a football team you have a, a right footer you have a left footer you have a midfielder you have a defender you have a striker you have a goalkeeper you have a coach if everybody is a coach of a team nobody will be on the pitch mm -hmm. so if everybody is feeling like i'm the one who is doing that, and the fact that you're different does not mean the other person is insignificant mm -hmm. you know so Celebrate the difference mm -hmm. as long as it's not bad difference. Yes, yeah. yes, amazing. Yeah. Who I'm sure you are, you are learning so much, and um, 
would love to even hear from you. That's for the ones who have been married, yeah. you know, five years, ten years. You know, I was sharing with my husband today. Every single time I see people who have gotten married ten years, fifteen years, I'm wowed. I'm, I, I'm forced to always say congratulations yeah. because it shows that you've been working. It's not easy. So feel free to share with us in the comment section what you've also learned. It will be a community of learning and marriage. It's a beautiful experience. So... What have I learned? Uh, I think that for my number seven is to never let go of vulnerability and companionship. Mm. I think it's the little things. Mm. You know, my ability to be very real with you, to say, oh, babe, uh, I felt jealous about this today. Mm. Mm. You know, I think those conversations are important. Yeah. Every single time we try to veil our feelings with our partner, we are losing out on very intricate values that yeah. shouldn't be that shouldn't be out yeah. you know it's intent it's 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 it must be intentional of us that we build on vulnerability companionship so i've learned that um apart from the, the fact that as individuals here yeah, um i always say jesus says man ought always to pray mm -hmm. so the minute you find yourself as a man there's a responsibility placed upon you to pray mm -hmm. and the template for prayer the bible says is praying without ceasing mm -hmm. so aside from the responsibility of praying as individuals you have the responsibility of your spiritual life yes um is also the fact that prayer bonds couples in a very mind-blowing way i cannot agree mind-blowing way you know, you, you're finding it mm -hmm. difficult to bond. I mean, take take your mind back, especially in circles where it was done sincerely. I mean, in the youth fellowship, you, you, you were in the Hebrews. Yes. You guys prayed together just once every week. Yes. What did that do for you? So it, the bond was, was yes. something else, right? You're coming to church and you're looking forward to seeing your friend. Yes. And the friendship for us was more from... People will pray together with yes. and all of that, you know. So, take that into marriage. And it's just... And it's out of this world. So, aside from the fact that, you know, someone someone um, said something. I, I don't want to mention his name. He said that anytime he prays with his wife and they cuddle while he's praying, that the, and now, don't switch from prayer to something else. Yes. Right? But... Every time they pray and they are, they are holding each other praying, said the kind of prayers that the wife utters in those moments, Come on. they are usually out of this world. Oh, they gotta be out of the world. Yeah, usually out <laughs> of this world. <laughs> no, 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 because really, as 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 a couple, yeah, the Lord is interested in that part of your life, the of emotional part of your life. Of so, you know, I I know that prayer cuts across. You know, you're praying to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And the Lord is touching several other parts mm -hmm. of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading a post someday, you know, from this lady who just loves the Lord. And she was saying, you know, she was about to spend time with the Holy Ghost one time. And the Holy Ghost said, go pay, pay attention to your husband. He, he feels like he, he's been neglected. Mm -hmm. You know, she's like, no, Holy Ghost, I want to spend time with you. And mm -hmm. he said, no, go, go, go mm -hmm. pay attention. Of a truth, when she met her husband, mm -hmm. he didn't want to complain. He said, I know how much you love the Lord, you know, but it's true. I've been feeling neglected. So I said that to say he is very much interested mm -hmm. in the emotional and parts you call carnal. I mean, in the, in the context of marriage. Marriage, yeah. Yes. In the part you call carnal, he is very much interested. So I know that prayer does a lot. It balances your emotions. Yeah. It makes you vulnerable, you yes. know, praying together. It clears up. You, you, in fact, sometimes you begin to to actually be more vulnerable than you thought you could ever be after a prayer session. Yeah. You want to forgive quickly. You True. want to walk out the fruit of the Spirit on your inside very fast. You True. know, praying together as a couple, come on. Even praying opens your eyes to the purpose that God brought you both together for. Yeah. And you cannot trade that for anything. Nothing. You know, when you're praying together and saying, Lord... Uh, for this country, Lord, for this state, Lord, for this nation, do this. You brought us together for a reason. For this life, Lord, we are interceding. Come on, you can't trade that for anything. So please, it's very intricate that you realize. And it's, it's one of the things that we've learned in our marriage. Prayer 
is so powerful. Do not trade this for nothing. Yes. I've also learned that it's possible for us to advance in our individual careers yeah. as much as we are advancing collectively. Yeah. What do I mean? You know, sometimes, you know, you just get, it's easy to just get lost in a married, uh, let's pursue one goal. Yeah. But there, you are a force on your own. Or do I say, yes, standing on your own, you are a force. Combining yourself together does not mean you should lose out on the purpose to which you've been called. So whilst the Lord has made us one, you know, chasing ten thousand, uh, uh, one will chase a thousand, ten will chase tens of thousands. But as the Lord has made us one, there is a purpose to which he's called us, you know, to individually. So our duty is to, to birth that individually as much as we are birthing collectively. And both partners owe each other being midwives. What do I mean? So you be the midwife for your husband to birth his dreams. And for the wife, she becomes the midwife for you to birth her dreams. And then collectively, you are also birthing purposes for your life. Mm. Yes, so it's possible to follow your careers collectively and do that also individually. Please do not lose your voice. It's very important. So be, being a part of each other's life shouldn't stop us from pursuing our careers as individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it takes two individuals to make a couple. Yes. The last one for me would be um, the value of having relationships outside um, your spouse also. Valuable relationships that are the necessary for, I mean, all that you should have. I don't believe in having best friends outside your couples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. that's sometimes it makes me cringe when I hear um, <clears throat> a married woman or a married man calling a woman outside the marriage, mar the married best, best friend. It sounds very sketchy, cringe worthy, yeah, cringe worthy, and all that. But you should have friends, have valuable relationships yeah. outside. That also helps you not to overburden your spouse. Yeah. with too many things and sometimes things that they're not even trained yeah. for all right so um have valuable relationships outside um the marriage um, it also helps to um, ease off the burden of life so with this we have come to the end of this very gentle chat and um, we trust that this has been a blessing to you in one way or the other. Yes. Do well to let us know. Let us know um, where it bless you. And if you have questions, do well to drop it on the comment section also. And also subscribe. Do well to share the video and subscribe. God bless you. Subscribe. God bless you.